Hey guys, what is up? My name is Alan and welcome back to the Alan Hines YouTube channel. Right, today, it's been the first vlog in a while, okay? I do apologize about that, but there's been really nothing going on. There's been a lot going on. Coronavirus, you know? Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I think the last vlog actually was April, uh, when we actually picked up the car, but... Um, oh, yes. The car's been in the garage pretty much since then. So, let's go in, have a look. Uh, we want to start on some things. We need to make a plan of what we do to the car, because... Um, yeah, it's not in the grace of shape. You would follow me here, darling. Um, <laughs> like, so you see. Uh, oh, there's Jabba. Oh, Jabba, Jabba! Let's come here, my baby. Oh, my baby. So, right, as you can see, it's a cash magnet. <laughs> yes. So, um, as you can see, it's been doing nothing. It's been used as a shelf for the time being. Um, yeah, it, it needs a proper look over. We need to measure the chassis to see where exactly is it bit because we have noticed there's been a huge um, a difference in alignment from left to right especially. Um, and we do think there's a noticeable difference between the strut tower's height and position wise uh, due to the, uh, well, because of this causing the alignment, mis uh, misalignment. So essentially what's happening, to give you guys a bit of context, now because we crashed the car at Jaffes at the end of the year, um, there's been obviously a lot of things happened. First of all, the Lorca Tron arm unfortunately broke, which had to be repaired. Uh, Darren and the guys at Group D repaired that. It's probably the only Lorca Tron arm fairly they've ever had because it got mangled against the wall. Um, and I've hit many cars with these, this kit. I've had this kit since day one, steering arm, uh, steering arm and stuff. Um, however, I always looked a bit odd. it always looked a bit odd to me how one wheel was further back than the other that would determine the caster setting for the car and for example when we were over in the Middle East I was having a few issues with transitioning uh, one direction it was perfectly fine and even on angle in one direction it was nice but going in another direction uh, it was very twitchy it was very too, it was too sensitive and transitioning from that direction back to the other way uh, was much slower. I had to drive the car much harder to get the, the transition. But when we were over there, we had my good friend Dean Martin, a fellow pro driver here in Ireland. Uh, we brought him over, he was a massive help. He got the car back on track to the ABC. Um, with him, Michael Sheehan and James Dean um, from DMM Sport and obviously James Dean team. Are you watching the cat? Have you been? No. So, um, yeah, of course, Dean was over with us and um, uh, they did a few measurements and there is a 7mm uh, track difference between the uh, left side front wheel and left side rear wheel versus the right side front wheel and the right side rear wheel. So 7mm, that's quite a bit of a difference, it so, uh, makes sense for the difference in caster, uh, which means it's just something bent in the car. This has been 5 minutes and 50 seconds of me rambling about the car setup. So, um, yeah, but there's also like a minute of cash. It was a minute of a cat. Okay, fair enough. four minutes. Let's say four minutes. A minute of a cat. So that means four minutes of me rambling. Um, so, okay, the plan for today is to bring the car outside, take all the body panels off, wash it down because it came back from the Middle East a bit dirty. Yes. And uh, take the cat off the car, of course, because she's on it. And everything else. The cat can stay. No, the cat cannot stay. She won't be here for <laughs> right now. You clear out the garage, get the car outside, give it a wash down, uh, take all the body panels off, and just figure out what do we do. Do we. Reshell the, this particular chassis, or re this particular car, into the other chassis that we have lying up on the side over there, or do we just try and get this fixed? I think we should try and get this fixed. Oh look, all the little paw, paw prints on the dust. It's so cute. Smells good. Yeah. Smells sexy. Schmexy. 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 Alrighty. We went over there with the hopes and dreams of staying together, and I'd say I tapped the wall four or five times over there, so everything fell apart <laughs> very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, this is what happens when you tap the wall. It's just mm -hmm. a yeah, little. Little tap. Look, look at that. That's perfect. There's only one 
like what? Like look at this, look how great this is, right? <laughs> See all the tape? The tape is still there. It's just hanging off because I rubbed, I like beautifully <laughs> scraped it off. Like, I have to give myself credit now, it's probably my best job of a wall one yet, like. Huh? Now most of the time there's no <laughs> evidence well, well, left. How did we get broken in the first place? <laughs> fair enough, okay, I did bait the car off of the wall a few times. But, in fairness, uh, it wasn't helped either that Sebastian Fonchin decided to take a Krishna on top of us as well. Uh, so you hit him five it. times? Yeah, I hit him six <laughs> times, I think. Uh, I hit the door round two, so the door was falling apart. Of course, it's infecting judges, they put walls in, there'd be nothing for you to hit. I, exactly, yeah, the judges is a problem. <laughs> The S14 is now a bit stripped down. Landers has taken off some of the Oman International Drift stickers that we had, and we just put them on the garage door because that's kind of like a memorabilia place. But it looks like a bit like a bit like a exoskeleton kind of race car thing right now. Um, I loved what like my buddy uh, Kelleher, Richie Kelleher of Custom World Automotive Welding Fabrication, and my dad did with the rear tube setup. It looks like a proper like you wouldn't even know that it's a car. Uh, it is a dune buggy. <laughs> Uh, it's actually turned out in pretty well, Nick, considering the abuse it got. It did uh, six, uh, five, nine events in the last season. Um, rear rad setup was mint. Uh, didn't really have any issues. Of course, we're having a bit of corrosion and rust here because it, it was in the container coming back from Oman. So, um, yeah, we don't know. We'll have to repaint all of that, I suppose. But this bar held up beautifully. Uh, I tested it at the first round of Drift Games last year. And we did actually bend this, but it was bent back straight again. I think there was a crack in the weld. You can actually see it there from where it bent, um, but it's grand. Other than that, the car held up pretty well. I love it in this situation, like or this this spec. It's pretty baller. Alan is failing. Yeah, the heat probably didn't help. Uh, we got hit in the door in Oman by my good friend Ali Maxi. It is Mark IV Supra. Um, if I'm honest, I think every Supra is pretty angry that their hearts have been stolen and put into Nissans. <laughs> Alrighty, so we've finished washing down uh, all the rubber and stuff off the car, like any grease or oil that kind of, uh, that kind of, I suppose, got stuck on it in the last, uh, well, since over, since the moment, so. It's kind of clean enough to ready to strip down. Compression tests, just see if, uh, the condition of the engine because uh, this particular engine there uh, did all the drift games, an event of BDC, um, I did a track day in Mandalo and it did three, three rounds of Oman International Drift. Oh, don't put your hand up there. <laughs> <It> really did. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to do it. Um, we've been running the engine, so the engine got up to about 60 degrees uh, Celsius, so we'll just do a quick compression test to see what the engine is like. Hopefully, all fingers crossed, and we're fairly confident compression that the compression will be pretty sweet. Um, which means we can take the engine out and see, I suppose, down the line eventually, is there anything wrong with the uh, chassis? So, uh, we're just doing this now to make sure we don't have to do anything, um, I suppose, while the engine's out. Building a brand new, well, not a brand new, but a new uh, engine for this car. Uh, might not be for this one necessarily. Um, it might be for that one, the one that you see on its side right now. So, um, 
yeah that's where we're kind of are with this uh, this particular car uh, this engine for those who are wondering is a 2JZ VVTi GTE head so it's a it's a twin turbo um, turbo engine head uh, with VVTi so it's out of a wrist up but the bottom end is from a zero oh, sorry a 92 or like a 93 um, a soar so it's a or just that's a hot one was it that's a hard one <laughs> spark plug um, so which means it's got the ticker rods and um, pistons well it's got the ticker rods so it, it, it makes about 550 crank horsepower anyway while my dad does all the work and I do absolutely nothing um, let's see what this compression test results come back as that's, that's the main yeah like so for anyone wondering um, does not look confidential no there's uh, 8 bar across the board pretty much 8 bar which uh, I think it was like 110 ish, 115 psi, maybe a bit high, I don't know, we'll have to Google. Uh, we're using like old school kind of uh, pressure gauge tester. <laughs> but um, pretty happy with that, like they're all the same, so that's promising. Uh, obviously, we just need to do a, a psi calculator to make sure. Um, we did this at like a warmish kind of engine, so when the engine was kind of warm. Um, we have to, we do have some upgrade goodies for this there, don't we? We do have a bit a few changes inside there, in the garage. inside there in the garage. Maybe we'll pull them out there. We'll kind of um, show them. I have a bit a few engine bits as well upstairs in my room. Um, do you know where the pistons are, Dad? So yeah, we've got some new engine bits. Um, as I said, we've got new pistons. Uh, here we've got diamond racing pistons. Uh, I can't remember the size these are. Um, it's been so long since we actually got them. But uh, yeah, they're quite nice. They're ceramic coated. I believe that's what it's called. Um, perfect for that. Uh, we have to get the block. Is it bored or honed? Honed, isn't it? Or we have to get them bored now because we've got these. Yeah. So yeah, we have to get the block bored. We don't have a fucking clue. We <laughs> really don't. All we knew... I think it needs to be bored because the, the we... bores were gone oval. So that's our piston set up. Um, pretty sure some reputable drivers have used them before and had some great uh, success, reliability and stuff to answer their pistons. I can't really see the failing point of them, but again, I'm not an engine expert when it comes to cars. Uh, you would know a lot more about engines, but you wouldn't know what's a good piston and what's a bad piston. Uh, so I'm pretty, we have a lot of confidence in them. Next up, we've got BC connecting rods. So yeah, these are tried and tested. Uh, I think everyone knows about BC and the, uh, them as a company. Uh, so yeah, the sweet, um, beefy, not really the same much really, they're just the same like the pistons. Don't really have a clue what I'm looking at, I just know that they're strong. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, isn't it? That's all we know. They don't make more power, they just allow us to make more power really. Yeah, and they're a rod and they connect the things. Together. They connect that thing to that thing, that's all we kind of know. Like this box goes and that box are together and then this box here of bolts and studs, they're bolts and studs. A That's ARP. all we know. Yes, ARP they're bolts. Strong as well. we they're know. strong. We know that they're strong. They don't make more power, but they're stronger. So that's better. When um, you make more power, you need them. Y yeah, you need them. <laughs> when you need more power, you need those bolts. Yeah. It seems like it anyway. And we've also got some engine bearings. Um, Again, I think these have to be specific size again. I don't really know. They're strong as well. They're apparently strong or they're long longevity, I don't know. So that's our new kind of engine package plus the turbo block which is inside the doghouse. You can't really see. Well, it's covered in plastic. It's covered in plastic, but... Uh, the head is up on the, 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 head is up on the shelf inside. Yes, the but I think our plan would be to take the head off this um, and put it on top of this engine because that head has two 76 degree cams and like, I don't know, some other stuff. Yeah, it was... It, it was basically rebuilt. Yeah, all the valves were reseasoned. Yeah, so it was... Uh, Valve seals and all that. Was yeah, done. so it was just refreshed. So it's pretty stellar. And we take the head off that, plunk it on top of this. Should have at least, what, 600, 650 horsepower maybe? We could even see more, depending on our turbo setup. Um, well, the gearbox is the thing. Actually. Yeah, that's that's the, our limiting factor as a gearbox. And in a sense, maybe our differential, but I think... Uh, the differential, we got two years out of it and it broke probably because it was leaking oil, <laughs> which kind of sucks, but um, yeah. Uh, we've got some other go goodies, I forgot to take about The other upgrades, um, I don't know if you can really consider an upgrade because it is a no-name product, a no-name manifold, turbo manifold. 
uh, but this is a uh, 2JZ GTE turbo manifold uh, twin scroll T4 so uh, this should work we'll probably end up putting it on uh, this current setup um, or this current engine if we don't get this engine built in time or funds kind of sl slow down a small bit um, so this turbo manifold will probably be put up onto this engine simply because the uh, turbo manifold on this car is ancient. <laughs> ancient. To my knowledge, I believe it was on Paul Collins' car. Yes. And I'll put a picture of what car it was on back in whatever year it was, 2006, 2006 or, seven. or seven or something. So this turbo manifold has been around a long time. It's been rewelded probably more times than. I, it was like. A welded a million times before you even got it. Yeah, it had been welded, I'd say, about 20 times before we had gotten it, and we've gotten another, how many years? Four years out of it? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Uh, I saw some live stream footage, and the whole turbo manifold was glowing. You could see it through the bumper. Um, it, it's quite probably warm. responsible for the last engine failure. Probably, yeah. Because, uh, because it, the, the piece, that piece burned off the inside of the manifold, and it jammed in the wastegate. The wastegate stuck open. Was way event and you well, we finished we finished third but we probably only had about 300 horsepower but like uh yeah we finished third so we got the result but i mean the engine was it was running a whole warm the oil temperature was really hot um we were i was very close to retiring the car saying like i don't want to harm it but at that point i'd say the damage had already been done by that point so we just kept going like um so it was worth it in the end uh second upgrade is this intake manifold so this will be put on the new engine. Uh, it's a hypertune intake 2JZ GTE VVTI or GTE turbo manifold. Um, it's even got its uh, top top uh, top feed top feed uh, fuel rail. So it's really nice. Like they got this nice billet set up um, uh, intake tank thingy, um, and it's got some bits and pieces. It's really not really. I mean, other than looking really nice and lovely and just pleasant, eye pleasing to look at. Um, there's not really much to say about this. <laughs> so, yes, that is our new engine setup for 2021. Uh, we might have it set up by the end of the year. We don't really know, but I think the plan is to kind of have it ready for next year uh, when the season starts up again. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a little exciting project. Of course, that is the most, well, it's probably one of the more expensive bits that we've kind of sorted out. Uh, the next bit is obviously to put it together. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what else to say about this. Maybe next few bits and pieces we might have to get is maybe a new turbo or something like that. We're not really sure, but I think the plan is to get the engine going and the rest of the stuff we have there will actually work with this whole block setup that we'll end up having. So in that sense, I think we're kind of okay. Other than that, uh, we have no plans with the transmission or the gearbox. We're still running the BMW stuff, so we're going to be limited. Um, a lot by that. Um, to be honest, the gearbox, the BMW, so we use a BMW 5 series 3 litre diesel gearbox and it's really good gearbox for the cost. Um, but like when you do as much running as we do, we kind of go quite far into competition. We're probably doing, it's probably one of the more successful cars actually with BMW box. Mm. Would you say? Probably is. I think a lot of people in Ireland have decided to stay with that setup because they know they can still actually do quite well um, in events. Um, and I think we've kind of proven that, but it is getting sluggish, like I couldn't even change gears quick enough, I'll even show a clip there in Omen, I actually had to wait till the car had dropped down enough revs before getting it into gear, I don't know if that's a shift or setup that we have done incorrectly, but um, it is quite slow and I don't know, I keep missing gears in it all the time, so it is quite frustrating, uh, obviously if it's sequential you can just bang up and down whenever you want, but uh, yeah, we're kind of limited there by budget wise, so hopefully that's something I would like to change in the future. Um, would certainly make it less things on your mind that could go wrong, I suppose, which would be nice. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. A bit of an update of what our plans are for this year. Um, this is my dad. <laughs> you can follow him on Instagram. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you guys very, very soon. Uh, this is the update for now. Uh, we'll keep you guys up to date what we do with the actual chassis. Uh, I'm talking really, really fast right now. I hope you guys are going to understand what I'm saying, but I don't know what I'm saying to myself. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Talk to you guys very soon. Bye, 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 bye. Can you take this? Okay, can you grow a few inches taller? There you go. There we go. Can you even see the camera now? Yes. You can? It's harder to see though. Yeah, can you go up a bit higher? Oh my god, why are you doing this? My arms are going to be sore. Okay, well then maybe raise it down as well. Lower it down. Okay. Do I look okay? Yes. Yeah? Yes.
yeah? Fabulous, darling. Fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, what was I going to say again?